So MuleSoft developers now get to use the same ID experience that you have just seen, which is Code Builder. And to show you more, I would want to invite Akshata Savant, developer advocate MuleSoft, to the stage. Thanks, Aditya. Hello, everyone. I'm super excited to be here at my first Dreamforce and to share all the MuleSoft updates with you all. Cool. So Akshata, tell me, as a MuleSoft developer, mm -hmm. what is the tool that you're currently using to build Mule apps? And what's this whole new IDE experience about? Yeah, so we have been using AnyPoint Studio, which is an Eclipse-based IDE, for a very, very long time. But thanks for sharing all the tooling lib with us. We now have a brand new IDE called as AnyPoint Code Builder, AKA ACB, which will be helping us with build a Mule application. And as we have just seen, it's similar to what Ananya has just shown with the Code Builder. And it's also built on top of same tech stack. And I'm so excited that all Salesforce developers wanting to learn MuleSoft, because now we have a consistent IDE. All right, that sounds cool. And by the way, ACB is a cool acronym. Yes. <laughs> how about you show all of us how we can work with ACB? Sure, let's bring in the demo. So what you see here is a cloud version of AnyPoint Code Builder, using which you can design and implement APIs and also build integrations. Basically, it's a one-place store for all your integration needs. For example, let's say I want to design an API. I can go ahead, click Design an API. I can further fill in the information, design an API, and scaffold it further to build a Mule application. So today, we'll see how to design and implement API in order to build and retrieve, basically retrieve and insert contacts in the backend system. So let's get started. What you see here is a Mule project, an existing Mule project, consisting of a RAML file to define your API specification. Here, we can see we have a contacts endpoint and a get method, which will be retrieving list of all the contacts from the backend system. This is defined using a RAML file, but we can also do the same with the help of OS. How about we mock our endpoint by simulating our API? Let's bring in the API console and go to our endpoint and mock the service. Yay, we now have a successful result, which is returning the output, and it's as per our expectation. Once our API is validated and approved, we can further go ahead and implement this API in order to build a Mule integration. Today, in the interest of time, we have already implemented and scaffolded this API. So let's bring in the implementation file. Here, we can see that there are different views, right? We can see there are two views. Let's give it a time. Yeah. So we have two views, which is graphical and the XML view. In the graphical view, we can see there are different components, different connectors. We also have a flow list using which we can navigate to different flows and subflows. Let's navigate to the flow that we have just implemented, the get contacts endpoint. And we can also see the similar section highlighted in the XML part where we can also make our changes. Next, we can add in new components using the plus symbol there. We have different components like the core processors, connectors, snippets. So in the connectors, we have different types of connectors. So suppose if I want to integrate with a Salesforce system, I can go ahead, click on the Salesforce connector, I can perform the operation. I can bring in the operation I want to perform and configure the credentials. Next, we also have snippet files. So basically, snippets are going to help you to reduce the code block and help you with the development time. And this is a very new feature. Apart from that, we have like two types of snippets, like user-based and the built-in snippets. And that's not all. You can also integrate with any third-party system by bringing in the connectors from the exchange, which are available for free. Moving on next. Today, let's add in a very simple connector, a logger component, and let's see how to do that. Now that I've added the logger component in the canvas, let me make some changes and add a message to display all the results, display the payloads from the contacts. 
And once this is done, I can further go ahead and build, run, deploy, test, basically do everything from this one single place. So let's go ahead and deploy the application. And suppose if in future, if you want to make some changes to your existing API, you can go back to your RAML file, make some changes, and further scaffold it to build a Mule integration. And you can do that simultaneously with the help of iterative scaffolding. And that's not all. For all those of you who love working locally on your studio, we have an exciting update. So AnyPoint Code Builder is also available locally as a VS Code plugin, using which you can build your Mule application. You can basically do everything that we have seen on cloud on your studio. And all these functionalities are, as I said, it's available locally. They are ex they're expected to be GA this winter release. Moving over to our slides. So the awesomeness doesn't end here. We, wa we also have AI features coming up with you coming up for you with the help of MuleSoft. So on the roadmap, we have Einstein for AnyPoint Code Builder with the help of generative flows. And you can actually translate natural language into flow and develop your Mule applications. So that is going to help you to speed up your Mule applications. And that's all about AnyPoint Code Builder for you all. I would like to hand over to Aditya.